Hi, this is Annie Grace and I am answering readers questions and I got an email today from um, I'm going to keep her name confidential actually and she says hi Annie. Thank you so much for uh, Your workshop. I really wish I would have been able to join. Sorry. If this is a bit of a long email and um, I've read your book and I thought it was great. In fact, I stopped drinking right off the bat for about three weeks until a friend came around with wine and I thought a glass won't hurt and that was it. Bang, and I'm consuming more than ever. And I've always had an issue with drink, specifically with wine. And I hate it, but I love it at the same time. About three years ago, I read Jason Bale's book and that changed my life. I understood the brainwashing, the social pressure, and it clicked with me. And I stopped drinking for six months, even going on an all-inclusive holiday without desiring a drink. Then I got, then myself and my now husband got engaged and his sister pressed a glass of Prosecco into my hand and despite my protestations, I had a sip and that was it. And I now feel that I'm beyond repair. I know and I understand all the reasons why, the brainwashing, the chemical responses from reading your book, Jason Bale's book, Alan Carr's books, but I feel like something massive in my subconscious does not want to change and it's fighting my conscious desire to change. So I'm actually drinking more than ever. Since last Thursday night, I've had eight bottles of wine and my tolerance is now so high that you barely even notice that I had a drink. I so desperately want to stop and restore my life before it starts to destroy my relationships. I'm in a financial mess because of drink and I simply don't know what to do now. Do I read your book again in this hopes that it goes in? I remember a warning in Jason Vale's book saying something along the lines, if you ever drink again, then rereading this book won't work. Unfortunately, there is no way I can afford to go um, to rehab or anything else, but I'd be grateful if you could provide me with some guidance. I feel like I need a brain transplant. So this is such a good question. And I've um, heard that about both Jason Dale and Alan Carr's books that they say at the end, uh, if you go back to drinking, basically all bets are off. Like you're in it deeper than you ever were before and you're just basically screwed. And I would like to take huge issue with that sentiment. I think that's absolutely not true. I think the only way that you ever, you know, are totally screwed is if you resign yourself to be totally screwed. If you decide that this is stronger than me, if you decide that I can't do anything about this, if you decide that I'm not going to be able to overcome this. And so first of all, I just want to give you permission to like throw that belief, throw that idea that you're screwed like out the window because it's not true. And in fact, most people's paths are not one and done. You know, I certainly had an experience where it was like, okay, I'm just done. And, and people do have that experience. But most people that reach out to me, most people that join the intensive program or one of my other programs, it's not a one and done thing. It's because they need more help, more support, more of a guidance system, more ways to go forward and more ways to start over again and again. And so I just want you to know, like, first of all, that that, that idea is just totally false. And a lot of people, just keep trying. I remember a few different um, people in the Naked Mind group and the different communities, and there was a few different people, two women and one man in particular that stand out for me, where over the course of literally a year, they probably posted 18, you know, day ones a month. And then the next month, it was 15 day ones. And then the next month, it was 10 day ones. And then the next month, it was five. And then guess what? The next month, they actually went 30 days. And then the month after that, they had seven or eight day ones again. But then the month after that, they went 60 days. And then the month after that, they went 90 days. And one woman in particular, she's celebrating now her two year anniversary. Okay, so just because it doesn't stick the first time does not mean that you are broken, it doesn't mean that you're screwed, it doesn't mean that it's never going to work. The only way that you can fail at this is to stop trying. I mean, that is literally the only way. If you keep trying, you will get the help you need. You will attract the right resources to yourself. You will bring the right people. You will bring the right accountability. You will get the help you need if you keep trying. So I just want to throw that out of the, out of the, um, Throw that thought out of your head, okay? That is not, you don't need a brain transplant. You are not broken. Um, the, the second thing I really want to say is that often we go into this, and especially when we read a book like Jason Bale or Alan Carr's book, it says, okay, you never drink again. Never can drink again. That's it. That's your life. And when any human, how our brains work, when any human is faced with this, okay, I'm never going to drink again, you feel like you failed before you began, especially if you had a lot of day ones. You feel like that goal is so huge. Guess when you're going to know that you're successful? If you decide I'm never going to drink again for the rest of my life, when will you know 
that you have made that goal a reality? When will you know that you've been successful in achieving that goal? When you dead, you're dead. You will never know. You will never know because you will be dead. You know, I, I don't say I'm never going to drink again. I say I drink as much as I want, whatever I want. And, you know, it's been over four years now that I have not wanted a drink. And I have not, like, that is where I live because as soon as I say I'm never going to drink again, I feel that sense of insane pain and, and disturbance. And, like, my, it, everything in my mind starts to go like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. What is happening? I have this one-year-old daughter, and I tell this story sometimes, but it's hilarious. I love colored pens, so I have a lot of them by me, and she loves my colored pens, and sometimes I don't want her to have my colored pens, especially when she's going to draw on something, and if I try to take those directly from her, she gets in this, like, tug of war with me and starts screaming bloody murder, and she's so mad, and she's so upset, and she's, like, goes crazy on me, but if I just distract her with something else, and then I can take the colored pens very nicely when she's not really thinking about it, right? But our brains work in the same way. When we say, okay, you're never going to drink again, we like dig our feet in the part of the part of you that says you love wine digs its feet in and tells you all these stories about how you're never going to be able to do that it's not going to be the right thing to do you're going to be missing out all of these stories start to come into your brain because you're digging your feet in and you're pulling you're pulling against this because somebody's trying to take from you something that you've decided you love or provides benefit so i just want to give you permission to let go of the never again okay that alone is amazing for people. I want to give you permission to do something really radically different. I have this amazing friend. His name is Alex Sharfin. He's a friend. He's a coach. Incredible human. And he told me this story about how he learned to shoot a gun. And he is one of the best shots like that like I've definitely ever met. He like has I, I don't know a lot of about guns or gun shooting, but he told me he can outshoot some, you know, top agents in kind of the FBI and CIA and stuff. And so how he learned to shoot a gun is his instructor put him one foot away from the target to a point where he could not miss. He gave him a target he could not miss. And then he backed him up. And how we normally sh learn to shoot a gun is we start way back behind the target. We shoot and then we miss, we miss, we miss, and we gradually get better, right? And that's this idea of like, okay, I'm never going to drink again. I miss it. I'm never going to drink again. I miss it. Gradually get a few more days in, a few more days in. But I want to give you the opposite permission. I want you to say, how long can you reasonably go without alcohol? Is it three days? If it's three days, great. If it's one day, great. By the way, if it's less than three days or one day, you really physically can't go without alcohol. This is not a conversation for like Facebook or a book. This is a conversation for your doctor and you truly do need to like seek, you know, um, some other type of help. And, and that's well beyond kind of what I deal with. I deal with the psychological aspect of addiction, which according to the CDC is most addiction. 90% of excessive drinkers, according to the CDC, are not physically or chemically dependent. So, but if you are in this where, yes, you know you can, you've done it before, you've had to, you've gotten sick, or you've been on medication, you can go a day, then that's the target you're going to make for yourself. And you're going to start to win and improve through winning and get that psychological, you know, aspect of, wow, I did that. Because right now where you are, and I can hear it in your email, is you feel like an abject failure. You feel like nothing's going to help. I need a brain transplant. There's nothing I can do. You need to build the muscle of achieving stuff, right? And maybe it's just achieving something really, really little, like a single day. And maybe you're not even going to try to string two days in a row. You're just going to go for a single day, right? And maybe it's those things, those little things that you're going to string together. Um, I have something, it's free. It's called the alcohol experiment. And it's a 30 day challenge. And if you end up drinking during the 30 days, that's fine. I would suggest signing up for that, going through making the one commitment to yourself that every day for 30 days, you are going to read the email that comes to you and watch the video. And you are going to do the reflections or the questions within that program. So it's an email, it's a video, and it's questions or reflections that really dig into the like deep what you want out of your life. Commit to that, you know, and if you string a few days in there, amazing. Commit to getting onto the website, commit to reading other people's stories, commit to kind of making that change and like take the fear of forever out of it and start doing stuff that you can win at and build this muscle of winning and achieving. And that's how you get the self-confidence back in yourself to where you're actually going to be like writing me and you're 
total success story and you're going to be so happy with where you ended up. So let me know if this is helpful. I really, really appreciate the question. Thank you so much for your vulnerability. I know it's a question that so many people have and I just appreciate, appreciate you sending it in. Did you miss this Naked Mind Live? And do you maybe have a little bit of FOMO? But don't worry, I've got you covered. In fact, I had the entire event professionally recorded and it's available digitally. Transformation in your living room. Yep, that is what it's all about. You can grab your digital ticket at thisnakedmind.com forward slash digital ticket. And as always, rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast as it truly helps the message reach somebody who might need to hear it today.